Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are going to be fitting two brand new galvanized second row doors with Exmoor trim handles and Exmoor trim hinges. So behind me is the finished article and I couldn't be happy with how well these have turned out. Now obviously you'll see in just a moment how they looked when they were raw in their galvanized state. We've had them professionally painted which did take some fettling just to make sure the job was perfect. But the doors have gone on an absolute treat and the shut lines and the contours of the doors are fantastic. It really is surprising when you consider it's an aftermarket product. It's not a genuine Land Rover door, it's a galvanized third party door that's just gone on brilliantly. Now, what's really nice nowadays is you can buy a whole replacement trim kit and that includes all these plastic channels, the little arches here and all the felt runners and they're all cut to size, which is brilliant because back in the day when I was doing this for a living, I had to cut them all by hand. So although this is a guide on how to do this job, it's the way I do it. I'm not saying that is the perfect way, but it works for me and it makes the job a lot easier. And do you know what? If you're not that confident in doing DIY stuff on your vehicle, this should make this job more easy. And I say that because one of the things that I do, for instance, is I'm fitting the felt runner uh, aperture upside down. And I choose to do that because it makes fitting it so much easier. And you'll see that in the build. So enough waffle, let me get stuck in and I'll show you how it's done. So this is the door we're going to be fitting to our Project Defender. Now, for those of you who are well into your Defenders, you're going to notice something a little bit different about this, and that is that it's got a galvanized frame. So unlike a traditional, genuine, original Defender door out of the factory, which would have been a basically mild steel frame with an aluminium skin, these have actually got a steel skin, a uh, mild steel skin, and a, a galvanized steel frame. So they are built for the job. It's a massive problem for a lot of people doors invariably are going to rot. I mean, these vehicles, nobody anticipated that the fenders would still be on the road 40 years later. And as such, you know, things are going to need to be replaced. And the doors, unfortunately, are definitely one of those items. All the bracketry is in the correct position. A lot of detail in here. Look, this is all off the original moulds and the original jigs from Land Rover. So these have all been made exactly the same as a standard door. And they have used all the same construction methods in building these doors, so you get the exact same rivet here uh, as you do on a genuine door, so nothing's different. And when you take delivery of your doors, make sure that these corners are perfect, because if that is dropped with any weight, uh, both there and there, they're gonna get damaged. So just check all the corners on your doors when they get delivered to make sure they've safely made it to you in one piece. So I'm gonna try and make swift work of this one. And the first thing I'm gonna do is mark off where my L-shaped brackets are that control the arms for all the latches and mechanisms. So that's basically how we've got our brackets. And that just makes sure that we can then put everything back together again. So it's super easy. What we have to do is remove our interior handle which is connected by this rod here to our mechanism we've got to release our push down lock which is just a little clip on there uh, and then we should be able to take our regulator off the window is held onto the regulator uh, channel here just with these two eight mil bolts that go through to these plastic fixings so we want to undo those so we've just released our bracket now, the reason I've done that is because we're going to be lowering the window all the way down through the face of the door. And just pop this pin off. That bar will now come out. Now, the, the clip's actually going to stay on because it's inside a plastic clip uh, holder, which is great. So this is now free. We've got to do the same over here. That one comes off. So if you need to hang on to that, So we'll remove the push button lock. And again, this one will just come off from there. So we've left our two clips on our L brackets, if you like. Next, we've got to release our door latch. And this is attached to our mechanism, our lock mechanism at the end of the door here. Pop it out and this should be free. We've got one more at the bottom here. 
And then we've also got one on the side here as well um, on the bracket. So you might find that once you've released this, you need to wind the regulator up again because there's a little cog tooth here that gets in the way of removing it from this bracket at the bottom. So we've got our regulator off. Now we've got this uh, plastic drain at the bottom here. Um, there's a good chance it's gonna break but because it's bonded on. Okay, that's not too bad, we can use that again. Right, so this is our check strap and we need to remove that to allow the glass to pass down. Once we've got the glass out, we'll actually be putting this back on so we don't damage the bodywork with the door swinging in the wind. It's got a captive plate on the back, which just slides out. Now we can slide this out. I've released this one now, this means we've got a bit more movement on the window just to pull it away from the door as we drop it down. Just want to try not to catch your fingers on this bit. Because I've not had my tetanus injection. So we're just making sure that we get our bracket look. Don't pull the glass too much because it's going to crack. Hopefully. And this is actually how we put the glass back in as well. Okay, there's the glass. So we've got another little clip just here that we need to free off. There we go. Release this. Now we've got three 25 Torx bolts. They're quite long, so a power driver's good. It's got a little rubber gasket on it, which makes it feel like it's stuck on, but it's not. And there we go. Now, because we've removed the support um, screws from this bracket, this should be free. And if we just give it a gentle persuasion, look, it comes away from the glass. And it's located in the top of the door in a groove. So with a little wriggle, I'm hoping that'll come out. There we go. Pull that down. With any luck. Yeah, these won't be too rotten. And there's a good chance that this is actually glued in. So we'll have to do give it a bit of persuasion to get it out. There we are. That's the plate. Oh, that's a bit rotten, so we might have to replace that. I'm just trying to expand that felt trim. There we are. Second piece of glass. So we can take our door off now, and we're done. So you'll notice that I didn't take the door handle off, and that is because I'm fitting new door handles. I'm fitting some really, really nice Exmoor trim door handles. Uh, we've got one on the other side, and it looks amazing. You'll see that in just a second. But the other reason is, even if I was going to be fitting standard door handles, I wouldn't attempt to get the old door handles off your doors. And the simple reason for that is the screws that pass through tend to seize inside the rivet nuts uh, because of all the moisture. And if you do get them to spin, which is incredibly hard, you'll probably end up spinning the actual rivet nut in the plastic housing, and then the handle's no use, and you still can't get it off. So if you're going to have to if you're not replacing your door it's a slightly different thing and we are going to be replacing our door handles on our front door so I'll go into a little bit of detail of how to get these door handles off without damaging your doors but this video is just about replacing the door completely so my door hinge is off I was lucky because someone had actually fitted stainless steel bolts in here but I've got the standard Torx ones on the TD5 at the bottom doesn't matter we can get those out but there is a captive plate at the bottom I'll just show you how to get that uh, out without losing that in the vehicle so this is the captive plate from the top and it's just basically you can get your hand on it at the back here just keep your hand on it take it out and we'll use that again so I've just used one of the stainless bolts from before just to pass through and put it into that captive plate so it don't lose it and that then means I can take this one off no problem and I know my captive plates all in there 
it's not going anywhere and I won't lose it. So the new hinges are a doddle to fit. Now these are the Exmoor trim hinges, they're beautifully CNC machined and we did go into some detail on these um, in a previous video and I'll put a link up above if you want to get the, all the detail and the info about these. So you want to be putting these on with the thin section at the top. Uh, they don't have any extra holes drilled in like the front ones for the mirrors, so they're both the same. So they come with these uh, gaskets. It's a rubber gasket with a self-adhesive uh, piece on the back. Just put that in place. And then you can go ahead and fit them. A little bit of copper grease on here, just at the end. There we go. So the nice thing about these is they have a pin torques on them. So we can get that on there. Now I'm not going to go super tight because I want some adjustment on these. Like that. So same scenario at the bottom. We're going to be fitting the bottom one first, just very loosely. So you're basically just switching one for the other, just making sure you've always got a bolt in that captive plate. Okay, so the door at the moment is fairly light because there's no furniture on it, so I can just feed these bolts through. And then just around the back, washer and a nut on each of these. First job I want to do before I start fiddling about with things is get the check strap back on to protect my B pillar. We don't have any adjustment on these bolts on the doors, so you can just go ahead straight away and tighten them up, and then we'll have some adjustment on our bolts that go into those captive plates, and that's how we position our door and get our shut lines and everything right. Hopefully, with a bit of wriggling, we should be able to get an approximate shut line. You can use a little wedge or a trim tool or something just to put in to hold it while you get it where you want it. Okay, I'm happy with my initial shut line look, got a nice even line around here. We do need to put a new door rubber on there, but I won't do that just yet. And we're ready to get our latch on. So on any galve fitting, you're gonna have this sort of feathering of the galve on some of the fixing. So you need just to draw these through and we'll have to do that all over the door just to make sure everything goes in as it should. I'll put some copper grease in there as well just because there was a bit of corrosion showing. The thing about these Exmoor trim handles is they're so nicely finished. And again, I'll put a link up above where we actually reviewed these in more detail, but they've got a really nice rubberized mounting face on there that sits perfectly into the shape of the door. All CNC machined hardware, they work beautifully. So literally it's just a couple of screws and we'll get these on. It's pretty easy, just have to pass the latch mechanism through the door handle nice and gently. And there she sits. So we want to reattach this bar <coughs> onto our lever. And you might just need to wind it out. It's got a thread on it, so you can make it a little bit longer. And then it just pushes on to that bar so we basically stopped that bar from coming off and we should be activating this now just test the mechanism yep we're all good now there's a real art to getting these strikers correct for the door to shut on and what i tend to find is the best way i'm not saying it's the right way this is just works for me is i gradually tighten it up so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to I've, I've got it loose enough that it's only really going to move when the door shuts on it. Like that. It could do with going in a touch, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. So I'm happy with that position. So if I do that up tightly now, we should get a good solid shut. There we are. So we're all good. I am fitting all new plastic extrusions in here, which comes as a kit from LR Parts, including the corner pieces. And what's interesting about this is these channels actually have one slightly wider channel than the other. So the wider channel goes on the inside uh, of the door and that's where your felt runner is going to slide. And then the narrower one just fills the outside gap and then you can slot your corners in just there and there. So this next stage is probably the trickiest bit of the build. What we've got to do is try and install 
our channel. Now the channel actually goes in upside down. That's easy enough, but our glass has to go in from the bottom as well. I find it easier from the top, so I like to put it in that way round. So it, it's, I don't think it makes a lot of difference, but you know, you've got a choice this way round or that way round. I think the only difference is there might be slightly less water getting into the door, but at least ours is galvanized. We've got our support beam and this top edge locates into the hole up here. So like that. Now don't be tempted to paint this before you fit it because it's such a tight fit it gets scratched. I did that on the last one and I've had to redo it. So this wants to be out. So just angle it up there first then slide that one up and this one should slide in like that. Now we should, we just angle this out a little touch. We have to get our glass in. So we drop it in the top, slide it up, get it to go into that top piece, close that up and then we're going to support it from the bottom. So I've got my new support bracket. Uh, it's stainless steel by the looks of things, which is nice. Um, it doesn't come with a top piece on it and they do glue a load of gunk in there to stop water and stuff running down. But I'm going to use that foam pad that I just happen to have lying around with an adhesive on it. And that's going to sit there underneath. So we use our felt first and then we're going to mount this. Perfect. Now, if you are concerned a little bit about water ingress in that area, let's say you're not doing this on a galve door or any door really, um, you can actually just add a little bit of black sealer mastic in there just to stop any water running down. And you can test it by putting it on there before you put the door cod on, just check it's watertight. There we go. Good and tight. So I've just chopped this much off the bottom of this one because I wanted to sit in my plastic channel. You might not have one, but if you do, it's worth doing. And then I've got myself a new strip. The short one of the two goes in here. And we're gonna be putting our longer piece in there. Like so. So we've got a top one in, we can push this one in, get it tapped in. Our back one tapped in. And we're good to go. So these are the longer ones. And then we just do the same over here and on the top. Now I'm not bending the glass, I'm just Le leveraging it out a little bit just so I can clear these clamps. There we go. In. Lovely. So we're in position. Let's put our check strap on. Not only will that stop the door from sliding, it should stop everything falling out. So we can put the regulator back on and I just thought I'd show you the back here of what it looks like. So we've got our brackets all in this correct place again, still running through the channels. Now we should be able to go back on. And hopefully these will line up. Last little job, just got to put our regulator back in place. There we go. Okay, we should be able to go up and down. Woo, nice. Well guys, there you go, it wasn't that hard. Um, it's just a little bit of a process involved, but I'm really pleased. And I think what made the job so much easier, firstly, those kits that are available. And I've put a link in the description to all those kits. You can buy them direct from lrparts.net, but you can get everything you need for this build that I've used. But the second thing that made the job so much easier and so much nicer was the Exmoor trim furniture. So these handles, in my mind, and I don't often say this, are better than original Land Rover handles. These are the best handles I've ever come across. And those hinges as well. I mean, this door 
shuts better than any Defender door I've ever come across. And so does the other one. And it's just a testament to how good that system is. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to see a little bit more information about the Exmoor trim handles and also about the hinges, I'll put some links on the screen now. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great weekend and I'll catch you on the next one.